Carolina to a team that has been a thorn in the side of Alabama really for the last two decades. That's Southern Mississippi, another Conference USA team. So if the Tide were to take ECU lightly, they could have a very difficult afternoon, but I don't think that's the case. This team very focused for Alabama. Good week of practice. They backed off a little bit, took off the pads after an hour of workouts on Tuesday. On Wednesday, went out in just uh, helmets and shoulder pads, tried to back off a little bit. They're in the middle of a nine-game stretch, a nine-week stretch with no breaks, so you have to sort of find your breaks in the middle of a week. East Carolina won the toss, and they deferred to the second half, so the Crimson Tide will take the football to begin the game. Freddie Millens, one of the two deep men back for Bama. Arvin Richard, the other. Brantley Rivers will kick off for East Carolina. First time these two teams have met. ECU 4-22 all-time against Southeastern Conference teams. Arvin Richard takes it at the one. Tripped up as he crosses the 45 by the place kicker Bradley Rivers. He was a step away from going 99 yards on the opening kickoff. Arvin Richard has been much improved along with the entire unit. It's not just one man when you talk about a return unit, but he has broken some big plays as we see here. They set up the wedge, got some blocks, and Arvin starting to accelerate a little bit more when he finds a hole, giving the tight excellent field position on their first drive of the game. Bama will start in the shotgun. Redshirt freshman Andrew Zow. There you see his numbers on the year, making his second start. Swings it out, high and incomplete, looking for Sean Alexander. Andrew Zow on the year, 21 out of 69, 465 yards, one touchdown and two interceptions. There you see the Bama starter, Sean Alexander and Dustin McClintock in the backfield, Michael Vaughn, Quincy Jackson, and they actually inserted Calvin Hall as a third wideout to start the game. Samuels, Redmill, Hogan, uh, McDonald, and Cuthbert doing a pretty good job across the offensive front for the Tide. On second down, Sean Alexander and Arvin Richard, the two men in the backfield for Bama. But Zao will throw again. Quick out to Calvin Hall, who makes the grab. Forced out. After crossing midfield down to the 47 of East Carolina. A little different look that time, David, to go with Arvin Richard at the fullback slot. You get your two speed guys in there for the Crimson Tide offensively. Defensively for the Pirates, a 3-4 look. McCleary, Darden, and Johnson, the down lineman. Some pretty good linebackers. Coleman, Pernell Griffin, Jeff Kerr, and Mark Yellock. And then in the secondary, Monroe, Foster, Phillips, and Kelvin Suggs. What looked to be a good game for Bama on second down. Didn't actually happen. A flag on the play, and they backed the tight up five yards for a legal procedure. So it'll be second and 15. Zhao working from the shotgun again. Try to set up the middle screen to Michael Vaughn, but the Pirates were ready. Pernell Griffin and Mark Yellock make the stop. Pretty good read on the part of Vaughn. Noticed the ball was tipped and also knew that there was somebody breathing down his neck. Tried to get the football and create a little breathing room. Tried to dance a little bit, but uh, East Carolina doing a good job of swarming the ball carrier. So another loss on the play, and it's going to be third down and long yardage for the Crimson Tide, and Bama will go with five wide receivers. Good protection for Zhao. He goes deep down the middle, and it's intercepted. Kelvin Suggs playing deep center field for the Pirates. Picks it off. Quincy Jackson, the intended target. So not a great start for the Alabama offense. Not Third a good, interception on the year for Andrew Zhao. Not a good start at all. He throws this right in the heart of triple coverage as he's trying to go to Quincy Jackson. But the interception made by Kelvin Suggs has been a very athletic player for the Pirates from the strong safety position. This play never had a chance. Pirates covered it nicely. So East Carolina takes over at their own 29. Gerard under pressure and sacked back at the 17 by Cornelius Griffin and Reggie Grimes. 
back-to-back plays, but never had a chance because the minute Gerard dropped back, he had number 98 and number 97 right in his face. Alabama's been doing a better job the last few weeks of getting a nice push from the defensive front, putting pressure on the opposing quarterbacks, giving the secondary a bit of a chance. David Gerard getting the start today. Bobby Weaver has also seen a lot of playing time this year, but they're choosing to go with Gerard, who runs the option across the 25, pushed out near the 30, and a flag is down on the play. It could be against the tide for lining up offside. That's part of the problem East Carolina presents to you, the option, but then they are just as likely to step back and throw deep. They really do a nice job of throwing from their option set, or the option look, I should say. Makes them even more effective. Al Ford, our referee. And you saw there, David, the problems that a defense not accustomed to seeing the option can have. It looked as though there was some confusion on the part of the defense, nobody really knowing their assignments. And Gerard, not incredibly fast, a pretty good scrambler. But he was able to uh, find a whole pickup yardage plus the penalty on top. On third and ten, Gerard will throw. Correction, they run the draw. Cornelius Griffin snuffs it out. Jamie Wilson, the ball carrier that time. A pretty good play fake by the quarterback. And me fooled. I do say so <laughs> Not that it's real tough to do, but he had both of us fooled, exactly. I think. So Bama comes up on defense and... Holds the Pirates to three and out. Andrew Bays will punt it away. Arvin Richard, the deep man for the Tide, calls for the fair catch and makes it at his own 25-yard line. So neither offense, Chris Stewart, faring too well on the first series of downs. Nope, but you've got two pretty good defenses also that these offenses are facing. We talked about East Carolina and the success they have had. They are number one in Conference USA coming into this matchup in pass defense, although those numbers are somewhat deceiving because they have faced three consecutive option football teams or wishbone teams, so you wouldn't think ordinarily that the passing numbers would be too high anyway. Coach Mike Dubo speaking earlier in the week about some of the problems that causes. You don't really know what the Pirates are going to look like on defense because of the teams they played recently. He said they had to go back to last year's tape to actually really get a good look at what East Carolina likes to do on defense. Also a couple of different looks that these quarterbacks give you. While the option is their primary offense, the guy that had been getting some starting time for East Carolina, the young man that had been injured, Bobby Weaver, out with a uh, sore ankle, missed the UAB game after being injured against Army. He's more of a scrambler, and he's more of a drop-back passer. He is, a, uh, a, again, a different look between the two quarterbacks, so it's difficult to prepare for each one. A two-quarterback system, not totally unusual to Alabama after having faced Florida just a couple of weeks ago. So the tide takes over at its own 25 following the 42-yard punt. Zal is checking off at the line, works under center on first down. Sean Alexander, the only setback, fumbles the snap, but Zal, the heads-up play, picks it up, scampers forward for a pickup of nearly five yards. It hasn't always been pretty when Andrew Zow's been in the football game for Alabama, but it has been exciting. He's been able to, uh, to make something out of nothing on a number of occasions, and that's why he's earned the opportunity to get some play time and get the start for the last two weeks. Mike Dubose on the sideline in his second year at the helm of the Crimson Tide, 7-9 and nine overall. Marvin Brown checks in at fullback. Bama runs the toss to Alexander, who's dropped in the backfield. Brian Johnson shooting through the gap and dropping for Alexander, uh, dropping Alexander for a loss. They strung this out nicely. Did the Pirates cause him out to have all sorts of problems. So it'll be third down at eight. shotgun. 
Plenty of time. Over the middle. Complete. Ballard's head on the backfield. To the 45. Finally ridden out of bounds at the 47. Over in front of the Pirate Mix by Purnell Griffin. At the time, it picks up the first, first down of the game. Gain of 19 for Alexander on the pass play. Andrew Zhao had absolutely all day long to throw this football. The offensive line doing a great job, and these guys have been playing a lot of snaps. Will Cuthbert, 313 of 319 snaps, as you see. Alexander delay on the play. You've got uh, a number of guys that are playing about 90, 95% of the snaps on that offensive front. They are uh, definitely the workhorses this year offensively for Bama. Alexander caught his first touchdown pass last week. Calvin Hall wrapped up immediately after he made the catch. Brian Bentley there to put him down. Pickup of maybe one on the play. Little quick outs we've seen from this offense near Callaway, the offensive coordinator. It's almost like a running play. You throw the quick out in the hands of the receivers and hope they can break a tackle and pick up some nice yardage. ECU just had a defense nicely. Calvin Hall hadn't had a catch that short in the last couple of games. He's been the deep threat for the Tide, and Andrew Zhao has found him several times over the last two weeks. Play action over the middle, complete to Arden Richard. Bentley there to stop him again along with Forrest Foster, but it's a pickup of 22 for Arvin Richard. Well, when you've got those wideouts in the game and Sean Alexander, that's the man that might be the least likely suspect to get the football, but Arvin Richard, very explosive with the football of the open field, makes a nice catch, good throw from Andrew, and good yardage for the Crimson Tide. So it's a first down for Alabama at the East Carolina 31. Eric Locke, the man in motion. They give straight ahead to Alexander, who spins off a couple of tackles. Still going as he gets down to the 20-yard line, and that should be good for another first down. Yeah, we've seen more of that from Sean Alexander the last couple of weeks, David. During the two-game losing skid, Alabama suffered through. Sean was having problems breaking tackles, but he's been able to spin off of tacklers the last couple of weeks and has really been a big part of Alabama's offense and the success they've had the last week and a half. He spun off Griff Redmill, the left guard on that play. Picks up 10 and a first down. Seventh play of the drive upcoming, but the officials step in and blow it dead. Kevin Monroe cornerback for the Pirates, having a problem with his helmet, I believe. Had to come out of the game. Charlie Robinson trots on to replace him. David, you got the two youngsters in there, the freshman Freddie Millens and Eric Locke. They've been more part of the offense the last couple of weeks for them. First down at the ECU 20. Movement across the front as flags come in. For Paul Hogan's sake, I'm glad that was called offside on ECU. I would hate to think that he was guilty of an infraction and took a look like that. <laughs> Monroe checks back in after fixing whatever the problem was on the East Carolina bench. So after the five-yard step off, it's first and five from the 15. The Tide shifts on offense and goes with the triple stack formation to the near side. Zhao nearly intercepted again. Looking for Michael Vaughn, I believe, over the middle. Norris McCleary had a hand on it. He, he makes the wrong read here, Dave. He's got Freddie Millens out in the flat initially and then tries to throw it back to Vaughn. If he goes to Millens, he's got about five yards. Very dangerous pass and lucky to get that one back. Roderick Coleman applying some pressure. And now it's second and five for the tie. McClintock ahead of Alexander in the backfield. And they pitch it to Sean. 
Barrel is forward near the 10. And that will be close to another first down. Cornell Griffin and Brian Johnson, the Pirates there to make the stop. And Chris Stewart, perhaps a new wrinkle, a very subtle one, but the call to Alexander. We haven't seen that so far this year. We haven't seen much of it, but that's a little look from the past from Alabama to Tom Sweet to the big tailback. And you mix that in with the throwing, and it's uh, even more offensive. On third and short, Bama brings in the beef. Montoya Madden and Dustin and McClintock both in front of Alexander. He gets the carry and the first down. Wrapped up around the eight-yard line, but it'll be first and goal for the tie. David, uh, good to see Montoya Madden back in the game in power situation. He's been injured with a, uh, for a good bit of the preseason. The normal power pullback for the Crimson Tide, but back in there, leading the way for Sean Alexander. It's good to have him healthy again. A victory will be first and goal from the nine. For Bama. And the pitch one more time to Alexander. Cuts it back. Dives forward to the one. Kendrick Phillips, the man that tripped him up and saved the touchdown. You're going to see a couple of nice blocks coming from the left side. First off, big fullback Dustin McClintock leading the way. Gets a nice block from the tackle on the left side as well. Uh, excuse me, uh, Chris Samuels and Griff Redmill also. Able to cut it back, and Bama's not going to the door. Second and goal from the one. Alexander, one more time, touchdown. <laughs> Running behind Chris Samuels and Griff Redmill on the left side of the line with an escort from Dustin McClintock and Montoya Madden, a one-yard touchdown run for Sean Alexander, and Bama's on the board. Great push from the offensive line, and Sean, great vision to cut it back. And just enough to put Bama on the board first. Ryan Flugner on to try the extra point. A perfect 12 of 12 on the year. And he's through again. 7-0-2 to play in the first quarter. And Sean Alexander has given the Crimson Tide a 7-0 lead. Again, David, you'll see him go to the left side. Madden running interference. By the time ECU's linebackers were able to react, there was just no way to slow that big man down. Alexander did most of the damage on that drive. The big third down reception, picking up 19 yards to keep the drive going. 11 plays for the Crimson Tide. 74 yards on the drive. 5 minutes, 23 seconds. Time of possession. Snow 2 to play in the first quarter. Glad you're with us. Here on Crimson Tide Pay-Per-View, live from Legion Field in Birmingham. Burnell across the 15. Wrapped up and dropped by Marcus Spencer at the 16. Good coverage that time by the Alabama special team, something that has improved gradually throughout the course of the season. It has it has gotten better, David, as you said. That was a concern of Mike DeBose really coming into the season as you take a look at the scoring drive, but Jeff Rousey has taken over the work with the special teams unit, and there's been a great deal of improvement this year. Sean Alexander is ninth rushing touchdown of the season. Capping off that scoring drive, Jamie Wilson, the ball carrier. Kelf Bailey, the man that brought him down at the 25. So a good pickup on first down. It'll be second and one. Another thing, David, we talk about a good bit each week is field position. You don't want to allow East Carolina to pick up two or three first downs and change field position. You want to keep them backed up and hopefully force a punt early in the, in the series. Second and short, Leonard Henry gets the call. And will be close to the first down. But short. Al Ford says third down. 
Maybe if they'll just pretend there's a goal line right behind him. <laughs> but he can force a fumble. That seems to have worked pretty well the last two weeks. Bama's been unbelievable in the red zone the last two weeks against Florida and Ole Miss. Short yardage here on third down. The keeper by Gerard, and he will have the first down. Travis Carroll brought him down, but not before he'd picked up a couple and a first. Travis got there, but just a hair late. I, somewhat unusual. First two days of practice this week, Travis Carroll wore the green jersey, indicative of second team status. And this is the guy that really calls the defensive sets for the Crimson Tide. And Mike Dubose told him, I'm not happy with the play I'm getting from you. That changed over the course of the week, and I look for a good game today from Travis Carroll. Timeout called by East Carolina, 526 to play here in the first quarter. And Alabama enjoying a 7-0 lead. Travis Carroll, like a couple of the guys on defense, played a good number of snaps last Saturday. He played all 88 snaps on defense against Ole Miss. There's a lot of guys that are having to play an awful lot of snaps, and that's one of the reasons that the offensive uh, unit needs to do a better job of hanging on to the football and chewing up a little more time is to give the defense a bit of a rest. While the offensive front has basically been unchanged for Alabama, the defense with a lot of young people out there, they, they've got a little more depth, but yet they're having to play way too many snaps. Need to keep that unit on the sidelines a little bit more, but the defense has also got to be able to step up and get themselves off the field. It's not all the, the uh, fault of the offense touched on it in the pregame. It's kind of unusual when you look at total defense in the Southeastern Conference and you see Alabama at number 12 and yet the Tide not giving up a whole lot of points. No, you're right. Those are, are numbers that Alabama's not accustomed to and yet you talked with Ellis Johnson this week. He's happy with the effort he's getting from his players. They've just got to do a better job between the 20s. He said Alabama more than likely is going to be a great overtime team this year <laughs> should they go to overtime anymore because they're playing lights out inside the 20. Markers down as the ball is snapped, as the officials blow the play dead, and the Pirates may be guilty of moving prematurely. Five-yard step off against the Pirates who play fairly cleanly, only averaging about five penalties a game so far through five games. Swing it out near side to Chapel, who can't come up with it. And that'll bring up second down and 15. Pirates substituting on offense, but David Garrard has gone all the way thus far. Thought we might see Bobby Weaver this week, did not play against UAB last week, but instead the coaching staff deciding to stay with Garrard, who played pretty well against the Blazers last Saturday. Garrard on the keeper, and the Tide does a nice job of stringing it out. Tony Dixon there to finish him off. Third down and long yardage for the Pirates. About 16 yards needed for the first. They're one out of two so far today on third down conversions. Gerard under center will throw under pressure and he lost the football. Kendall Moorhead, the man who got in and applied the pressure, but heads up play by the Pirates falling on the loose ball. A loss of 12 on the play, and ECU will have to punt it. We talked about it a little bit earlier, David. The pressure Alabama's been able to get from the defensive front, and that young man, Kendall Moorhead, he's not a freshman anymore. Ellis Johnson saying this week he's not afraid to put Kendall in in any situation, be it run or pass. Jamie Wilson fell on the loose ball, but East Carolina has to punt it away. Arvin Richard returns it just inside Pirate territory forward progress stopped at the 46 so good starting field position for Alabama on this drive 347 to go in the first quarter 
They've had good field position really on all three series. Certainly not this good, but see if they can make take advantage of it. On first down, Zal sets up in the shotgun. Sean Alexander, the lone setback. Zal dumps it off to Quincy Jackson. Out of bounds near the 30-yard line, forced out by Tavares Taylor. But a pickup of 16 on the play and a first down. Good look at the quickness of the freshman quarterback for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Andrew Zal out of Lake Butler, Florida. The good fake and then the quick step to the outside. And he got a great block from Michael Vaughn downfield, able to pick up the first down because of it. You see the block there on Kevin Ward. So first down from the East Carolina 30. Inside handoff to Montoya Madden, who picks up five. Montoya, the senior out of Town Creek, Hazelwood High School. Haven't seen him a whole lot this year. He's nope. been a little banged up. That's right, and uh, just his second carry of the season. Again, primarily the short yardage running back for the Crimson Tide. And Alabama has really missed him in those situations. It's called on, uh, had to call on Dustin McClintock that much more this year in his absence. On second down, Zhao, quick release, looking for Shamari Buchanan. Batted away nicely by Forrest Foster. Yeah, Foster read that nicely, and also Andrew did not disguise the play very well. Shamari Buchanan, the only receiver on this side, and he see, see on the replay that he basically looked at him for the moment he began his drop back. So the incompletion brings up third down. Mama needs to take it just inside the 20 to keep the drive going. Five wide outs on third down. Zal to Jackson, who will have the first down. A gain of six on the play. Tavares Taylor made the tackle, but not before. Quincy Jackson picks up the first. Did a good job, David, of finding that first down marker before turning back to catch the football. Made sure he had enough for the first. Jason McAdley and Tim Bowens in the game at the wideout spots for Bama. Pitch it back to Alexander. Pulls his way <laughs> forward to the 12. Taylor there again to make the stop, and a nice job by Sean that time surveying the defense, picking the spots. Picked the spots and uh, just found the aftermath left by Dustin McClintock, who just <laughs> clean house, knocked down two. Looked like he got the defensive end as well as the linebacker. And Dustin continues to be just a, a tremendous blocker out of the backfield for Bama. Pickup of six on first down will bring up second and four for Alabama. Just under two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Play action, Zhao keeps it into the end zone. Touchdown! Michael Vaughn! First touchdown of the season for Michael Vaughn. And great play action by Andrew Zhao to set it up. Yeah, that's when he appears to be at his most dangerous, David. And the running game has been effective today, and that opens up the opportunities and makes the play action effective. If you don't run it well, play action doesn't matter. They're not going to go for the fake. Another impressive drive for Bama. Capped off by Ryan Flugner. Lugner got bowled over by the Pirates, but no flag on the play. The extra point is good, and Bama leads at 14-0. Good patience, too, by Andrew to wait until Michael Vaughn got open. Wait until he finished the route, got open in the corner of the end zone, and 
Alabama doing what is necessary, taking it to East Carolina early. Don't give this team any confidence. Try to put them away quickly. Seventh career touchdown reception for Michael Vaughn. And he's been waiting a long time for number seven. Has indeed. He has uh, had a few problems, has not been the type of go-to receiver that Alabama was hoping for this year. He's had some problems being in the doghouse with Mike DuBose, but put all that behind him two weeks ago and has played pretty nicely since then. 14-0 Bama late in the first quarter. Andrew Zhao after the interception on the first possession has looked pretty good. Completed passes to five different receivers already and we're still in the first quarter. Wisniewski set to kick it away for Bama. High short kickoff. Fielded at the 16. Burnell calls it in as flags fly. Mabry up past the 25 to the 26-yard line, but again, a flag on the play. I don't know that I've ever seen a return man have to run backwards to get to the wedge. <laughs> he made the catch actually about three or four yards in front of his blockers and then had to run behind him, picked up some yardage, but this one is going to come back. There you see the Alabama scoring drive, six plays, 46 yards, 209 off the clock. And a 13-yard pass from Andrews out to Michael Vaughn gives Alabama a 14-0 lead. Stepoff takes it back to the 10-yard line, and that's where East Carolina will set up shop. Pirates have been able to get absolutely nothing going on offense give up the middle to Jamie Wilson who breaks it for a good gain on first down a pickup of 15 before Tony Dixon and Kelf Bailey bring him down good read by East Carolina and able to pick up good yardage on first down that's the problem with the option you may stuff it a couple of times but there's always that threat of busting the 7-8 nine yard pickup or in this case more than ten. Kelvin Sigler actually in on that stop. A first down for the Pirates and the option from Gerard. Slowed down by Travis Carroll and Canary Knight there to lend a helping hand. Maybe a half yard for Gerard. Canary Knight the Junior college transfer for the Crimson Tide from Tallahassee, Florida. Played at Community College of San Francisco. Another guy like Kendall Moorhead that defensive coordinator Ellis Johnson says he's not concerned having in the game in any situation. Primarily in the past, a, a guy in there on passing situations, but not afraid to have him there in the run as well. Swing it out in the flat to Jamie Wilson who's out of bounds at the 30, but a flag is down in the Pirate backfield. It may be a late hit against Kenny Smith. Chris Stewart, we've talked in the last couple of games about Alabama's problems with penalties, but against Florida and Ole Miss, they were able to control it a little bit. Did a better job of not shooting themselves in the foot. And uh, this is a tight mistake that can really foul you up when you've got a team down. Gerard on the keeper, dives out near the Bama 45 and will be close to a first down. Gerard leading the Pirates in total offense coming into today at almost 147 yards per outing. Travis Carroll trots off for the Alabama defense. Tito Smith into the game. Up the middle it goes. And that should be good for the first down. 
Leonard Henry, the ball carrier. Tito Smith making the tackle for Alabama. Tito in the game in place of Travis Carroll at the middle linebacker position. And, you know, Travis was injured coming into the season. I don't know if he is completely healed. He won't admit it if he is injured, but you wonder if he is at 100%. At the end of the first quarter, the Crimson Tide leading East Carolina 14 to nothing. Back to Legion Field in just a moment. start leading at 14 to nothing welcome back to legion field in birmingham david crane along with chris stewart and the tied offense after the interception by andrew zow settled down nicely and has looked pretty sharp through the first quarter it's kind of unusual they would have jitters or what appeared to be jitters in a matchup in a non-conference game with east carolina after looking so good second half against florida and throughout much of the game against ole miss but that appeared to be the case but any jitters that may have been there now appear to be gone. First play of the second quarter, a keeper by the quarterback, David Gerard, tripped up by Travis Smith. Travis Smith. You got a Tito, you know, a Travis, a Travis. Pick, pick one in there. It's tough. Uh, Michael on offense. <laughs> we nearly got the whole Jackson family with us. Loss, loss of about a half yard on the play, and... There you see the discrepancy that has led to the 14-0 lead for Alabama. Gerard dumps it off to Jamie Wilson. Surrounded in the backfield, but he breaks free. Actually picks up two or three yards before Canary Knight and Kendall Moorhead bring him down. The Tide had a shot at him in the backfield, but... Couldn't wrap him up. Yeah, that was all Jamie Wilson, too. 15 catches on the season coming into the contest, averaging 7.3, and anything he picks up there was all Jamie Wilson. Great play. That looked like it was almost a lateral, David, when he threw the football, but good read by Wilson, makes the catch, and does a good job after making that reception. Third and eight. Carolina one out of three on third down today. Gerard under pressure. Throws it away, and we'll see if a flag comes down. It does. Nobody in the area. Kelvin Sigler and Jamie Carter had him wrapped up, and Gerard throws that one away. Jamie Carter a little slow in getting up. Carter was chasing him all the way, coming from defensive end spot. Almost got the football there. Did he get kicked? No, he landed on his ankle. Got rolled back. Canary Knight rolled him backward just a little bit. And Jamie Carter still down. It was intentional grounding against Gerard in East Carolina. I believe I said defensive end. I meant defensive tackle. But coming from the outside, got there in a hurry. I wonder how much longer we're going to see Gerard, the freshman, having so much trouble against Alabama's defense. And if Bobby Weaver is able to go at all, I would think you'd have to see him pretty soon. Bays back in to punt it away for East Carolina. Richard gets away from it as it goes out of bounds, and we'll see where they mark it off at the 25. So the Pirates had a had their most impressive drive of the day going, but the Bama defense steps up forces the punt. The Tide will take over at its own 25. Had a look a moment ago at the remaining schedule for Alabama. Alabama's going to have to play nine straight weeks after its open date just a few weeks ago. 
The Tide will be in Knoxville next Saturday to take on Tennessee. And then the Tide returns home to play Southern Miss, and that game will be offered as it stands right now on Crimson Tide pay-per-view. Call your local cable company in the next couple of weeks to check on that and make sure. But as it stands right now, unless something changes as far as the television schedule is concerned, that game will be available on pay-per-view. Call your local cable company. Satellite dish owners, you can call 1-800-TV-STARS and will also be available on the Dish Network. Tide will then finish out the regular season and what some folks have begun really calling Amen Corner for Alabama at LSU at Mississippi State and then back here at Legion Field in Birmingham against Auburn on November 21st. You say Amen Corner because they'll say hallelujah when it's over with. That is a brutal end of the season to face conference folks, Tennessee, then Southern Miss, obviously at LSU at Mississippi State, very difficult before wrapping up here against the Tigers. First down for the Crimson Tide, Alexander. Breaking tackles, past the 30 to the 32. Kendrick Phillips brings him down after a pickup of seven. The thing that makes Sean so unique and a pretty big running back, David, is obviously guys that size can run over people, but the ability he has to make people miss, it's not just brute force. He can, uh, he can do a little tap dance from time to time as well. Montoya Madden checks in at the fullback. And gets the carry straight ahead. Maybe two yards to the 34. Chris Howell wraps him up. And it'll bring up third down and about a yard and a half for the Tide. Montoya Madden still in the game. And along with Dustin McClintock, Alabama's been spreading it, but that's a pretty powerful look right there. Zal's numbers through the first quarter. Alexander, the ball carrier, has the first down across the 35, up near the 37. David, that's the Neil Callaway influence, the Alabama offensive coordinator, and all the talk about Charlie Stubbs, and while he obviously brought a lot of new ideas, something Neil Callaway has been involved with pretty successfully as a power running game ever since he was a player here at the university. Alexander off to a good start today. Nine carries already 40 yards and a touchdown. First down, Bama goes with the spread formation. Five wide outs. Zal from the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. And down he goes. Pernell Griffin from his middle linebacker position, comes on the blitz and drops Zal back at the 30. Yeah, he was absolutely untouched. Nobody there, and that's the first sack of the year for Griffin. Second on the team in tackles coming into the contest. But I say he's second on the team, but nobody's even close to Jeff Carr, the linebacker. He's almost <laughs> double anybody else. It's like they're giving him two for one in the stats exactly. to this point. Zal. We'll keep it, trying to get outside, up to the 35, maybe the 36, close to the original line of scrimmage. Charlie Robinson there for the stop. And it'll bring up third down and about 10. David, I don't know how good the block was from Eric Locke, but he did a good job of not committing a penalty because he was just trying to get in the way of the defender on the near side and was able to slow him up enough. A lot of times a, a freshman receiver will make a mistake of putting the hands on the defensive back and get called for a hold. Third and 10 for the Tide. Zal steps up in trouble and he goes down. Pernell Griffin there again, got some help from Brian Johnson in dropping Andrew Zal for a loss and the Tide will have to punt it away. Marcellus Harris is the deep man for East Carolina and the first time we've seen Daniel Polk this afternoon. Averaging almost 43 yards a kick this season. And he gets off a of beauty. High, tight spiral. Harris drifting back, makes the catch at the 15 and retreats. 
Has some blocking in front now as he takes it up past the 25 where he's ridden out of bounds by Chris Edwards and maybe a case that time of out kicking your coverage. 53 yards on the punt and an 11 yard return. Yeah, Chan McGee, he was trying to get there. Jamie Wilson, a guy who is normally being hit at a running back position, laid a hit on Chad and uh, able to spring the return man for a pretty decent return. 10-18 to play in the first half. Alabama leading at 14 to nothing. Give up the middle to Leonard Henry. Cornelius Griffin stayed at home and made the stop for the Tide. While we've mentioned Kendall Moorhead and Canary Knight as two guys that have really just gotten better and better as the years progressed, you put Cornelius Griffin in that same category, the junior college transfer out of Pearl River Junior College, native of Brundage, Alabama, earning the opportunity to get more playing time each week. Second down and 13 after the loss, Gerard <laughs> over the left side. Takes it across the 30, up near the 33, where Tito Smith brought him down. Somebody had a handful of Reggie Grimes' jersey. I don't know if you <laughs> saw, but uh, I believe it was the tackle on the left side for East Carolina. I would imagine that man saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Mike tends to recognize those. It was it was so bad, it was almost laughable, as you sort of saw a grin on the face of Mike DuBose. Not much of one, though. Third and five. Gerard on the pitch. Carroll tracking him down and drops Jamie Wilson. A look at the speed that time of Travis Carroll. And Coach Mike DeVos will be pleased with that effort. David, I don't know if Steve Stanley was supposed to take the pitch man here or not, but he got caught inside. And it was Travis Carroll making a great play from his Mike linebacker position that saved the first down. Andrew Bays in to punt it again. Nice tight spiral, drives Richard back to his own 23, and he is swarmed under there. Forty-seven yard punt by Bays. No return for Arvin Richard. And the tide comes back out on offense, starting at its own. 24-yard line. There was a flag on the play. 12 men on the field. Correction, a legal substitution against Alabama and not wanting to risk blowing a 47-yard punt. The Pirates will decline it and Bama will take over at its 24. The punter for East Carolina, Bays, is a pretty good one, but the rest of the special teams has been pretty much an adventure this year for ECU. They do not want this to get into a uh, field goal situation, although they probably wouldn't mind it down, down two touchdowns. The reverse to Michael Vaughn. Up past the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. We saw that last Saturday work extremely well against Ole Miss. Brian Bentley finally brought him down, and he had an escort in Chris Samuel. That's a pretty nice escort to have. We saw this last week, too, with Chris Samuel's running interference for the single-digit Eric Locke, number two, and now the double-deuce Michael Vaughn, beneficiary of a good block out in front. Good for a first down to the 36. Pitch it back to Alexander. Lumbers forward up near the 40-yard line. The ball came loose, but the officials say that he was already down before Brian Johnson pounced on the loose ball after making the tackle. You watch running backs stop on a dime and make a cut as ball carriers. We saw a fullback in Dustin McClintock stop pretty quickly to make a block there. and Not a whole lot for Alexander, but... McClintock making certain he had a chance for at least two or three. Total yardage continuing to be dominated by Alabama. 
Zal checking off on second and six. On the rollout, incomplete. Very nearly intercepted. Eric Reyes, I believe, had a hand on it, but couldn't make the play. Forced, perhaps, once again by Andrew Zal. Yeah, it's the third time we've seen him throw into triple coverage, Dave, and you see here he has time, just makes a bad read. I said triple coverage. There were actually about four purple helmets there in the vicinity around Eric Locke. So it'll bring up third down at the 40. The Tide needs to take it out just past its own 46. Andrew Zhao working from the shotgun with five wide receivers. That one batted down. Roderick Coleman timed his jump perfectly and swats that one away. And the Crimson Tide will have to punt it. Yeah, make that number four on the could have been department very easily could have been picked off ECU only had five interceptions for the year coming into this contest they've got one and three others that very easily could have been added to that total Daniel Pope got a beauty off his first attempt and another nice one Harris makes the fair catch at his own 16 yard line And that's where ECU will go back on offense. Thought we might see a little more of the two quarterback system that they had used to this point, but so far it's been David Garrard all the way, and he's back in there again to start this possession. Yeah, we had talked with Jeff Charles, play-by-play -play voice for East Carolina, and he said he thought you'd see Weaver. And then we got a, another word from sports information just before kickoff that it likely would be Garrard maybe the entire game, so apparently Weaver is hurt a little more badly than first thought. Henry the ball carrier that time, not much running room up the middle. Kelvis White making the tackle for Alabama. I say not injured as badly as first thought. Steve Logan admits the game next week for East Carolina against Southern Mississippi, a conference matchup, is really a bigger game to them than this matchup, so they may be just saving Weaver for that conference game. Kenny Smith a little over anxious on the Bama defensive front. And that will likely cost Alabama five. Steve Logan in his seventh year at East Carolina. Forty and thirty-three as the Pirate head coach, taking ECU to two Liberty Bowls back in 1994-1995. Actually was I believe the quarterback's coach at Mississippi State and left to go to East Carolina, be a part of Bill Lewis's staff. And when Lewis went to Georgia Tech, he became the head man at ECU. On second down, Jamie Wilson gets the carry. He will be close to the first down yardage where Kelvin Sigler and Travis Carroll bring him down. And the officials will measure the game to see if it is a first. We talk about Logan being familiar with the SEC from his days at Mississippi State. Both Ellis Johnson and Neil Calloway, two uh, coordinators for the Crimson Tide, are quite familiar with East Carolina. Calloway was a grad assistant under Pat Dye at ECU in 1978, and Ellis Johnson was the outside linebackers coach and recruiting coordinator in Greenville, North Carolina from 85 through 87. It is a first down for the Pirates. Just across their 27-yard line. And Chris, a name we haven't called yet. Number 26, Troy Smith for the Pirates. And that's good news for Alabama. Looking for the tight end, Buck Collins. Couldn't haul it in as he had Travis Smith on his back. And it goes incomplete. They don't go to the tight end very often, and maybe that's a good example of why. <laughs> but uh, they very rarely go to the tight end, although they do throw the football to a lot of different players in the offense, running backs and receivers. They'll mix it up, but the tight end, not a big part of that package. 
second down and ten following the incompletion. And Gerard sets up to throw again to the boundary and incomplete. Good coverage by Fernando Bryant looking for Troy Smith that time was Gerard. Yeah, he's been looking forward to this one all week because Fernando knows if he's guarding the top receiver on the team, he's going to have more opportunities for picks, and that's a pretty good matchup between Bryant and Troy Smith. Third down once again for East Carolina in a situation no coach likes to be in, but especially the Pirates who have had trouble picking up first downs at third and ten. Gerard with the deep ball and incomplete. Travis Smith got a little pressure that time. Looking for Troy Smith once again down the boundary, but good coverage by Fernando Bryant, and it was out of bounds regardless. With so many banged up players on this Alabama defense, and Travis Smith is one of those who wore the orange jersey at times this week, meaning no contact for him. So good to see the uh, three and out, or at least only a limited number of plays for Alabama's defense. Line drive punt by Bays. Handled by Arvin Richard, who takes it up to the 34, where he's brought down by Kevin Ward. So a 43-yard punt and a six-yard return for Arvin Richard. And with 5.21 to go in the first half, the Alabama offense comes back out. The Tide really hadn't gotten much going here in the second quarter after looking very sharp in the first quarter. Now, Alabama's really fortunate that this score is at 14 to nothing right now because they've made enough mistakes to let East Carolina get back in it, but the Bama defense refuses to allow that to happen. Zal to Alexander, who cuts it up, takes it up near the 40. Norris McCleary makes the stop for East Carolina. Give it to the big guy, let him try to find a hole. Got a block there from Samuels on the cutback and picks up some nice first down yardage. And that's something that you had talked about in the pregame, David, is the, the importance of good first down yardage for Alabama. Move the football, let the clock run, keep the defense off the field. Pick up a five on first down. Movement along the line of scrimmage. Norris McCleary. Entered the neutral zone, but we'll see if he was drawn off. Two very aggressive defenses, and we've seen a number of players move. A few encroachment penalties, David, but uh, you can tell those guys are chomping at the bit to get in there. Penalty yards for both teams. Alabama picking up the first down after the penalty. The Tide averaging almost five yards per play so far this afternoon. Zal with time. Shoots it out to Arvin Richard in front of the East Carolina bench. Clinton Cochran pushes him out after he crosses midfield into Pirate territory. And, Chris, we've seen a lot of different looks from this Alabama offense today. The one setback, five wide outs, two fullbacks in front of Sean Alexander. The coaching staff doing a good job of mixing things up today. They have, but we haven't seen a lot of shifts from Alabama at the line of scrimmage, nor did we see that last week. That's because the coaches don't want to create a lot of confusion for Andrew Zhao. If you shift, it forces the defense to shift. They want Andrew to be able to recognize what he's facing. Zal the pump fake, deep down the boundary, and just out of the reach of Quincy Jackson. Zal stayed in there, took a pretty good hit, and was about two inches from hooking up with Quincy Jackson. Yeah, Andrew was trying to let Quincy Jackson release, but he was having problems getting away from the corner on that side. A little bit late getting downfield. Andrew fortunate he got rid of this football before being absolutely leveled by Rod Coleman. Third down and two for the Tide. Two fullbacks ahead of Alexander. 
who weaves his way through traffic and picks up the first down inside the 40. Yeah, that's been the most enjoyable aspect to me of Alabama's offense this year, David, is yes, they're spreading the football, they're able to throw it around more, but in the short yarded situations to be able to line up with that power set and pick up the short yardage for a first down or in goal line situation. Bama's been very good at that this year and it's a nice added dimension to go with the wide open look from Charlie Stubbs. Alabama came in averaging just over 15 first downs a game. They've already got 11 here in the first half and that has to be pleasing to Mike Dubos. From the 38 on first down, Zal. Quick screen to Shamari Buchanan, who rumbles forward inside the 30 to the 29 before Clinton Cochran brings him down. And awful good to see Shamari back in the lineup as well. Good to see Shamari back out there after having the uh, injury in the preseason. Alabama very uh, got a good break there, actually, because the uh, defensive tackle on the near side, Brian Johnson, fell down trying to get to Andrews out. Andrew didn't have anybody in his way. No... Uh, obstructed vision trying to get the football to Shamari real quickly. Arvin Richard and Sean Alexander both in the game. Zao over the middle, open. Arvin Richard, touchdown! First touchdown of his career, Arvin Richard. From 29 yards out, good play action again by Andrew Zell. And Houston, Sean Alexander is the decoy. They go to the second man. Actually didn't line up in the backfield, but Arvin Richard, a good receiver as well. And the more effective Sean Alexander is, the, the more use they're going to be able to get from Arvin Richard. Ryan Flugner tacks on the extra point, and with 2.46 to play here in the first half, the Crimson Tide extends its lead to 21 to nothing. I'm not going to say it's been a perfect first half. As much as you could hope for, really, from Ellis Johnson and not too bad a performance on the offensive side either. Six plays, 65 yards. Arvin Richard on the receiving end of the 29-yard pass from Andrew Zal, his first career touchdown. Coming just before halftime, the million-dollar band on hand and will be entertaining the crowd at the intermission. A.J. Diaz is into the game. And we'll kick it off for Alabama. Mark Wisniewski struggled a little bit today, and there was some talk earlier in the week as to who would be kicking off. Diaz had a good week of practice, and Coach Dubose very nearly went with him today, but Wisniewski got the start, and after a couple of short kicks, Diaz will try it this time. Burnell feels it at the three tripped up maybe by the 15 yard line Eddie Hunter there Eddie, to bring him down Eddie actually knocked the East Carolina blocker <laughs> into it so uh, I don't know if you get extra credit for that but it'll be more fun to watch on the uh, film this weekend so the Pirates will set up shop at the 17 yard line, 237 to go before halftime. Gerard leaves it with Wilson, who is wrapped up in the backfield. Travis Smith greets him behind the line and drops him for a loss. Alabama takes a timeout after the play. David, they went with the, the play action. As we talked about earlier, if you're not effective throwing the football, the play action doesn't work too well. There's, uh, you're not really able to disguise very much. They're not afraid to go ahead and rush if the, uh, the passing game hasn't been there, and that's one area that Alabama's been tremendous in today. 
each team with two timeouts remaining here in the first half and the Tide wanting to get the ball back one more time before intermission if possible. Spending a timeout there. Gerard over to the Pirate bench to have a word with head coach Steve Logan. ECU has not been able to figure out Alabama's offense. They faced three straight wishbone teams. And it's, it's so unusual. Normally you talk about facing an option team and you're, you're unaccustomed to seeing that. It's been just the opposite for East Carolina. After facing three straight option teams, three straight wishbones, they face a more of a spread formation team and they've really had to go back and work hard on that this week. A look at the two head coaches coaches as we said Logan in his seventh year at East Carolina Mike Dubose just in his second season at the helm of Alabama Logan taking over after Bill Lewis left Greenville to go to Georgia Tech and there you see Mike Dubose's numbers Bama four and seven last season disappointing first year as you can well imagine for the former Bama standout and assistant coach. Second down and 10 for East Carolina from their own 17. Gerard on the option will keep it and brought down hard by Travis Carroll. Cornelius Griffin also there to lend a helping hand and again very quickly Alabama takes another timeout. Safe to say Travis Carroll got the message in practice this week. Didn't like, wearing, so. didn't like wearing that green jersey. Green is not his color. Nope, not for second team status. He has been flying around the football today. And Bama doing a nice job of stringing out the option and filling the gaps as well. Can't say enough really about the, the nice additions to this coaching staff this year. You look at Jackie Shipp on the defensive front, the enthusiasm as much as anything that he has brought to the Alabama defense. Charlie Harbison in the secondary, also a very vocal coach, uh, really captures the attention of the players. And for all the talk there's been about uh, Charlie Stubbs on the offensive side and, and the changes there, the defensive side has been much improved as well. Steve Logan pacing on the Pirates sideline, his team facing third down and 10. And if the Tide can come up with a stop here, they will certainly spend that final time out and should get the ball back with right at two minutes to go in the first half. Third and ten for ECU. Gerard sets up the throw, completes it over the middle to the tight end, Buck Collins, and he will pick up the first down. Marcus Spencer had the unenviable task of trying to bring him down. Collins listed at 6'3", 280, but he, he looks even bigger than that from up here. You know, they say TV adds 10 pounds, <laughs> but we're looking at him with the naked eye, and, and it's, it's 280 plus, that's for sure. Back to the ground game, and Jamie Wilson up the middle. Carries it to the 34, maybe the 35, and now... Alabama will let the clock run. Travis Carroll, Marcus Spencer, Cornelius Griffin all there to make the stop for the Tide. That was a huge first down for East Carolina, even if they don't pick up any points on this drive, just to, to run some clock and not give the football back to the Crimson Tide as, as much as anything was so important. Gerard keeps it, stumbles across the 40 to the 43 and will pick up another Pirate first down. Mike Dubose always coaching on the Alabama sideline. Even as a head coach, hard to get it out of your system. It is. And let you, the assistants do it all. But, you know, he's done more of that this year, and that's something that he himself talked about was getting back to being – more of an on-field coach and not just an organizer. I think Mike is, is growing as a coach just as this team is growing. Kelf Bailey. 
with a nice play for the Bama defense right before halftime, a loss of seven. They go on the option again, and option defense is really assignment football. I know it's that way all the time, but even more important when you're facing an option look to be able to stay with your man, and that's some of the discipline that Ellis Johnson had talked about this week. Gerard with the deep ball and just out of the reach of Lamont Chapel. Kelvin Sigler, Marcus Spencer defending for the Tide. Six seconds to go before halftime. We talk about the option and you think run, 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 but lest we forget, there were a couple of pretty good quarterbacks here at Alabama that ran an option look, but also threw the football pretty well also with some success. And while well, that guy is certainly not in the category of a Richard Todd or a Jeff Rutledge or a Stedman Sheely, it's still, it's the, uh, the threat is always there to go with the deep ball. This should be the last play of the half. Pirates content to run out the clock. Jamie Wilson, the ball carrier. And that will do it for the first 30 minutes. Alabama off to a quick start in the first quarter. Bama led 14 to nothing. After 15 minutes, the Tide tacks on one more touchdown here in the second quarter and Bama leads it 21 to nothing as the two teams head to the locker room. Stay with us, halftime coming up in just a moment. First and foremost, at the University of Alabama, finding the star quality that's in everyone is our proudest tradition. Leading at 21 to nothing over East Carolina. David Crane along with Chris Stewart. And Chris, not a bad first half uh, for Alabama by any means. The Tide got off to a little bit of a shaky start uh, in, the, in the first quarter. Andrews out throwing the interception. But after that, everybody seemed to settle down and they played much better. Yeah, we all did. I think we all felt <laughs> comfortable after the, uh, the first couple of series. But no question, Andrews out made some mistakes. He made some throws that uh, Charlie Stubbs will come down out of the press box and talk with him in the locker room at the half, uh, tell him just how fortunate he was. But a nice cutback run there, lowers his head, able to find the end zone. An impressive drive for Alabama. 11 plays, 74 yards, that made it 7-0, and now good play action by Andrew Zhao, hooking up with Michael Vaughn. Yeah, what made this play was the patience of Andrew to allow Michael to come open. He held onto the ball an extra second, let Vaughn get open in the corner, and made it a 13-0 game at the time. 14-0 after the extra point, and not long before halftime, Arvin Richard, his first career touchdown. And again, the play-action pass from Zhao, and that's been opened up because the running game has been so uh, effective today. You're able to go with the play-action, makes the defense freeze, and Zhao has done a nice job of finding the open receivers. East Carolina won the opening toss. They deferred to the second half, and they will take the football to begin the third quarter. A.J. Diaz will kick it away on in relief of Mark Wisniewski, who struggled a little bit in the first half. A first half really dominated thoroughly by Alabama. The left-footed Diaz boots it away. Five yards deep, Burnell will take a knee. And the Pirates will start the second half from their own 20. A look at the halftime stats, and first downs has been a concern for Mike Dubos, and that number has to be pleasing to the eye. Well, very much so, and you see the nice mix there as well. 75 yards on the ground, 118 through the air, right at 200 total, and the penalty numbers down somewhat, at least by Alabama standards the last few weeks. 
Gerard in at quarterback to start the second half. Leonard Henry gets the carry on first down, takes it up just past the 23-yard line where he's met by Cornelius Griffin and Steve Stanley. Important not to have a letdown defensively here, David, to start the second half. You've played a good first half. You've shut down East Carolina, and now you try to get them into a three-and-out situation and not allow, not allow them to get any momentum. Quick out is completed to Troy Smith, his first catch of the afternoon. Been averaging over 113 yards a game, putting him ninth in America, and that's his first catch of the afternoon. Well, not only is he averaging over 100 yards per game, he's averaging, David, over 20 yards per catch. He's had nothing deep at all today, so he's had to go on the little short route just to get the football in his hands. Third down conversions. There you see it's third and two for the Pirates. Gerard on the option won't have the first down. Travis Smith and others with good pursuit, and they drop him behind the line. Strung it out again. Everybody taking their spot defensively, taking their assignment on the option. You see it again. Cornelius Griffin, Reggie Grimes all forcing it to bounce out. Then Travis Smith steps in, number 48. So good to see him playing and playing well today after being banged up earlier in the week. Andrew Bays, a low wobbly kick. Richard from his 35 across the 40. Forced out at the 43 by Kendrick Phillips. So the Tide will have good starting position here on its first possession of the second half. East Carolina coming into today, we talked about how they were able to spread the ball around to a good number of receivers. Alabama has been very generous with the football on offense as well today, spreading it different receivers and even several running backs touching the ball. Yeah, three different uh, ball carriers today, and Alexander Michael Vaughn on a reverse. Montoya Madden uh, also with a couple of carries, but four different receivers have caught the football for the Tide. Arvin Richard, Quincy Jackson, Vaughn, and Sean Alexander. So they are spreading the wealth, and they've limited East Carolina to just two receivers that have caught passes. Buck Collins, the big tight end, has caught one, and Jamie Wilson out of the backfield has caught two. They have only completed now one pass, that one to Smith, the first one that has been completed to a wide receiver some of the East Carolina fans who made the trip from Greenville. Andrew Zow's numbers in the first half. Through the interception on the Tide's first series of downs, but he has looked very sharp ever since. The Tide starting from its own 43. McClintock ahead of Alexander in the I formation in the backfield. Pump fake, everybody's covered, and down he goes. Does Andrew Zow, Eric Reyes, brought him down. Zow had time to throw, but good coverage that time in the secondary for East Carolina. Yeah, Forrest Foster, number 37, was with Hall, not just step for step. He noticed the hitch and go and actually turned and retreated. And there was no way to get the football to Hall, and Zal decided to eat it instead. A loss of four on the play, the first sack of the year by Eric Reyes. Brings up second and 14. Zal on the rollout, trying to set up the screen pass to Dustin McClintock, but overthrown just slightly. The Roderick Coleman was the man right in his face who on the year is the team leader in sacks coming into the game with six. And Andrew had to just dump that one off and didn't really allow enough time for Dustin to release on that screen, but he had no other choice. Third down and 14 for the Tide. Three out of eight so far this afternoon, converting third downs. From the 39, Play action, Zhao in trouble again. Lobs it up and caught by Sean Alexander. What a great grab by the Bama tailback. 
A diving grab, and he's going to be, I believe, just inches shy of the first down. And just another sign of how he is maturing as a total football player, David. Sean Alexander just followed Andrew Zhao across the field, trying to find a spot in which to get open. And yes, it was a great catch, but also very smart on Sean's part to just be in position to be a receiver on that play. On fourth down, Bama will go for it. They need less than a yard. Alexander has the first down and more. Down to the 45 before he's finally brought down and again running to that left side behind Chris Samuels and Griff Redmill. And no question about it. And I think the decision to go for it on fourth down was a case of by the both saying, man, you know, Andrew and Sean worked so hard just to make it fourth and short. Feel kind of bad to not give him a chance to go for it, but also shows renewed confidence in the short running game. Alabama has gone with that power look with Madden and McClintock a couple of times today and to, with much success. First down, Bama, and the Tide will run the option. Zal keeps it. Thought about pitching it <laughs> at the very last minute to Sean Alexander, but wisely held on to it. Thought about it, then decided, you know, I do like being the starting quarterback. <laughs> so he elected to hang on to the football and not give it up. Andrew Zow ran that option quite successfully at Lake Butler, or actually Union County High School in Lake Butler, Florida. Never lost a game. Still has not lost a game as a starting quarterback. Incredible numbers for the young man. Not just a good athlete, but a winner as well. Pickup of one on first down. Zal sets up to throw in trouble, and he's sacked again. Right at midfield, that's the fourth sack on the afternoon for East Carolina. Norris McCleary and Mark Yellock in the backfield to bring him down. We had McClintock open in the flat and had Vaughn open to the right of the hash mark about 10 yards downfield, but Zal under heavy pressure could not find the open men. Good job by East Carolina, getting in Zao's face and not allowing things to develop downfield for the time. So that'll bring up third and a long 14 for Alabama. Zao will go from the shotgun. Swings it out incomplete. Looking for Quincy Jackson. So after converting on fourth down, Bama goes in reverse, and the title has to punt it away. I was afraid Mark Yellock, the big outside linebacker, 6'5", 230, was going to step in front of that one because pass thrown beyond the reach of Quincy Jackson, more towards the middle of the field, and that's the angle Mark Yellock was coming on and tied having to kick it away. Daniel Pope averaging 48 yards on two kicks this afternoon. Hangs this one up high. Harris will let it bounce, and it goes into the end zone. You don't see that very often from Daniel Pope, trying to hang it up high and kill it deep, usually angles for the sidelines, but he's had a little trouble with that the last couple of weeks, and also a pretty stiff breeze at his back. Yeah, his confidence has been down a little bit the last couple of weeks. He don't necessarily think about confidence being that important to a punter but it's just as important for a kicker as it is for any other position player and he's trying to get that confidence back just kicked out a little bit too hard with the wind at his back Pirates take over over the middle complete to Harris out past the 30 to the 33 and good for a first down 13 yard game before Fernando Bryant brings him down and the pirate fans finally have something to cheer about yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot for the purple and gold to get excited about today but they've had problems throwing the ball downfield have the pirates so they're going to try to run the receivers underneath a little bit get the ball to them on the short routes and see if they can make something happen afterwards to the air again and complete to lamont chapel across the 40 kelf bailey Brought him down right as he made the catch. It's a heck of a throw from Gerard, and that's exactly what it was, a throw, because he just almost dropped down sidearm, it seemed, and whipped the ball across the middle. East Carolina close to another first. Pickup of eight, brings up second and two. 
Back to the option. Gerard will keep it. Falls forward very near the first down marker. Marcus Spencer cut his legs out from under him, but it will be good for the first down. And that's another example, David, of why limiting East Carolina to just 18 passing yards in the first half was so important because when they throw the ball well, it obviously opens up their running game that much more and makes the option even more effective. Gerard struggled in the first half, but he's come out looking much better here in the third quarter. Open over the middle, tight end Buck Collins has it. Ridden down at the Bama 35 by Kelvin Sigler. And he's slow to get up, is Sigler. Gain of 21 on the play, and I think that's the second or third time they found the tight end over the middle. It's the third time they've gone to him. Second time he's been able to make the catch, and Kelvin caught up with him, but he had the big fella land on his right leg, perhaps the knee or the ankle, and that did not look good at all. Sigler, the leading tackler for Alabama, one of the tied captains. Training staff out to check on him. 8.15 to play here in the third quarter, and Alabama leading East Carolina 21 to nothing. Gerard a perfect four for four here in the third quarter for 48 yards. See on the replay, ooh, that did not look good. Maybe a hyperextension. I'm not going to try to play doctor from up here, but that did not look, uh, did not look real good. Bill McDonald, Les Fowler, and the other members of the Bama medical staff out tending to Kelvin Sigler, senior out of Mobile. Look at it from another angle and see Sigler trying to strip the football from behind and just had his right leg lock up on him and then didn't help matters that big tight end came down on that leg. Well, we've got a moment. Does give us a chance to look around the SEC today. You've got Mississippi State beating East Tennessee State thus far, 39-6, to with about three and a half to play in the third quarter. Also in the top 25, number nine, Wisconsin went over Illinois, 37-3. to Number one ranked Ohio State, no problem with Minnesota, 45-15. Georgia ranked 13th, beating Vanderbilt today, 31-6. to That is a final. And Arkansas did beat South Carolina in a final, 41-28. to and check out this, a note within the state. Number 14, Virginia Tech, upset by Temple, coached wow. by former North Alabama head coach Bobby Wallace. What a great first win for him. Unbelievable. So as play resumes, it's first and 10 for the Pirates at the Alabama 35. Reverse and a pass. Arnie Powell into the end zone. Touchdown to Lamont Chapel. So after putting together an impressive drive to get into Alabama territory, Steve Logan dips into the bag of tricks. The reverse pass works for 35 yards and a touchdown. David Kelf Bailey was there. He just took the wrong, wrong angle. And ball ended up going over his head and for a touchdown, but he was with the receiver the entire way. Extra point by Brantley Rivers is blocked. Kenny Smith picks it up. Laterals back to Kelf Bailey, who scores two for the five. <laughs> well, I've heard of getting it back, you know, making up for a mistake, but I don't know that I've ever seen it that quickly on a football field before. He doesn't completely make up for giving up the touchdown, but he does get a couple of points back, but this play was really Kenny Smith, the first 60 yards, gets the block right up the gut. Number 88 blocks it, catches it, and then you're going to see him try to find some help. He's huffing and puffing already. It's not even Bailey the midfield. Asking for the pitch in the... <laughs> Did Kenny Smith run the option in high school by chance? If he did, he only ran it 30 yards at a time because he was giving out of gas beyond that. Second time Alabama has returned an extra point for two. Last time against LSU, Lee Osmond did it down in Baton Rouge. 
This Another is... look at the touchdown. A good call, good play by East Carolina, and you'll see Bailey was actually there, but it almost seemed to stop, David. I don't know if he lost the football with the shadows and all of that, but the receiver certainly did not, and Kelf gets burned, but does get a couple of points on the other end, and pretty typical of today, David, even when something goes bad, it seems to turn out for good for the Crimson Tide. Third touchdown catch of the year for Lamont Chapel, and it's now a 23-6 ball game. Fourth missed extra point of the season for Brantley Rivers in the two-point conversion for Alabama after the block. And Rivers will kick it off for East Carolina. Football blows off the tee. It is a windy day here in Birmingham, but you could not ask for better conditions. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. And for Alabama, offensively, you want to reestablish things on this next possession. You don't want to give East Carolina any more confidence. You've got a pretty good lead, but still a lot of time left in this football game. Still 7.51 on the clock in the third. High short kick fielded by Chris Horn. Takes it right up the middle across the 35. Out near the 37, maybe the 38-yard line, Chris Satterfield makes the tackle on special teams for East Carolina. Five plays, 80 yards, a minute 40 off the clock, and the reverse pass from Arnie Powell to Lamont Chapel, resulting in the Pirate touchdown. Did all the yards, except for maybe eight or nine, not come through the air on that drive as well? They did. Zal, play action, dumps it off to Calvin Hall just across the 40. Wrapped up immediately by Kendrick Phillips after he made the catch. And it's been a nice couple of weeks for Calvin Hall. Catching the deep pass from Andrew Zal. Something he's been waiting for his whole career. The senior from Gallatin, Tennessee, one of the co-captains for the tie. Two catches, 104 yards last week. And obviously East Carolina has studied film well. They haven't allowed him deep at all today. Zal checks off at the line. Gets it off with one second on the play clock. Shoots it out to Shamar Buchanan. Fighting his way up close to midfield. Kevin Monroe brings him down, but that will be good for the Bama first down. Nice job by Andrew Zal, not just on the pass, but prior to that on the checkoff and that's something you hear Mike DuBose talk a great deal about is the quarterback putting the team in the best situation possible. He had three defensive backs and only two receivers on the near side so they go with a different play, a different look, throw it underneath to Shamari and let him try to pick up some additional yardage after the catch and he does a nice job of that. Zal to throw in trouble, stripped ball is loose and the Pirates fall on it. Norris McCleary falls on the loose ball. So Bama looked to, look to have another good drive going, but Zal stripped from behind his second turnover of the afternoon. Again, looking to go deep, just held on to it a little bit too long, and Roderick Coleman, the outside linebacker, whose name we've called a good bit today, Coming from the outside, stripped the ball free. It's his first forced fumble of the year. After the turnover, Gerard looking to throw again, intended for Marcella Terrence, but wide of the target incomplete. First incompletion of the second half for Gerard. So let's see if the Pirates do continue to take to the air. Both teams a plus two coming into the day in the turnover ratio category. And now Bama back to even on the year. From the shotgun, Gerard works. Completes it to the sideline. Fernando Bryant makes the tackle. Troy Smith takes it down to the Bama 45. Warren Fouts, Kelvin, uh, 
end of the game for Kelvin Sigler. Snap was low, and good job by Garrard to catch that and also get it in the hands of Smith. They made some nice adjustments at the half, had the ECU coaches to try to find a way to get the ball in the hands of the receivers, something they just couldn't do at all in the first half. Third and three, swing it out, complete to Harris. Inside the 40, still on his feet, down the sidelines, he may score. He does, touchdown, East Carolina. On third and three, they get 45 and a touchdown. We've called Buck Collins' names a, uh, a couple of times as a receiver, but the tight end number 81 coming in on the right of your screen locks up with Kelf Bailey. And a good job by Harris to shake free from Tony Dixon. There was just nobody left. Bryant comes in, but it was too late. Extra point by Rivers is good this time. So the Pirates take advantage of the turnover by the Tide cash in for their second touchdown of the day and all of a sudden it's a 23-13 game. We talked about just a minute ago, David, actually two minutes ago was the fact that you can't let up defensively or offensively. This is a very good East Carolina football team, the one that's trying to prove something as you take a look at the touchdown play again. Just a little swing pass to Harris. Hopes to get a block and he does. And also does a nice job of shaking free from the one man that was out there, Tony Dixon, not able to wrap up. Help was coming, but it got there late. And ECU very much back in this football game. Second touchdown of the season for Marcella Harris. They've won four straight, have the Pirates after losing to uh, Virginia Tech in their opener, 38 to three. And I think they feel like they've got a little something to prove. You know, four wins are nice but it came against Chattanooga, Ohio, Army, and UAB, and they feel like playing in Alabama right there along with Virginia Tech, two main programs. They're fighting for respect, and they didn't want to go down without a fight, and they have certainly come up off the canvas in this one. There you see the time remaining here in the third quarter. Alabama has seen its lead shrink to just 10. Again, the high short kick mishandled by Chris Orman, and he'll just fall on it at the 19. So the sky kick by Rivers. Horn can't bring it in and the side will start back up at its own 19. As good as Bama looked for almost two and a half quarters, they have looked almost as shaky since then, coming out of the halftime break. Second half offense, the Pirates out gaining the Tide 139 to 23. We'll see what the Tide can do here. Zal works under center and gives to Sean Alexander who stood up by Eric Reyes after he picked up a yard and the Pirate defense fired up. Alabama had Rhett Crutchfield in the game. Reserve tight end a little better blocker a little stronger than Terry Jones at the tight end position trying to go with more of the power look in a ground attack situation but obviously they're going to try to go back to the air with the three wideouts McClintock and Richard into the game as Zal throws incomplete looking for Michael Vaughn I think Andrew may be feeling a, little, feeling a little bit gun shy now, David, because he had plenty of time to throw in the first half, but here in the third quarter, he's been sacked a couple of times, had a ball stripped from him, and maybe trying to unload it a little bit quickly, a little bit too quickly that time, and trying to go to Vaughn. Third down and a long nine for Bama, and there you see the total yards in the first half and second half. Bama has fallen off dramatically. There's a completion to Quincy Jackson, makes one move, and he's got running room. Down the boundary, inside Pirate territory. And that will be good for the first down if it stands. There is a flag on the play.
afraid this one is going to come back, David. It's in the area where you might possibly see a hold, but illegal motion against Alabama. So instead of having the ball first down inside Pirate territory, the Tide will back up and face third and 14 at its own 16. Well, the penalty numbers may be down overall, David, but could not have come at a worse time as Alabama finally got something positive going offensively, got it in the hands of Quincy. The defensive back slips down, and Jackson able to pick up great yardage, but now you're forced into a third and long once again. Costly penalty that time. Zow to throw over the middle. Caught Freddie Millens up to the 40-yard line. Good for the first down. Kelvin Suggs made the tackle, but a 25-yard pickup on third down. Talked about in the first half, David, how both Freddie Millens and Eric Locke, the two freshmen, coming more and more a part of this Alabama offense. Great speed, proving to be reliable receivers as well. And, man, if he breaks one tackle, it's lights out because Freddie Millens, tremendous speed, probably the fastest player on this Alabama team. Tough to catch in the open field. First down for the Tide. Zow to throw again behind Michael Vaughn. It's intercepted. Forrest Foster will take it back for the touchdown. Thrown just behind Michael Vaughn, who batted it into the air. Forrest Foster on the spot. Called it in and returns it 39 yards for the touchdown. Vaughn tipped one up in the air on one of the, the I believe it was the first series of the game, David, and able to bring it in. That time, just a tough break for Bama as it goes right into the hands of the cornerback, Foster. And he takes it the distance. Extra point is no good from Brantley Rivers. So the special team's problems continue for the Pirates, but another big play by the ECU defense. Zal wanted to go with the three-step drop, the quick out, looking for Vaughn just behind him and right into the hands of Foster. And there's absolutely nobody there. Nothing but green grass between Foster and the end zone. And if the special teams work out the way they should, this is a tie football game. Again, the quick three-step drop. Had Vaughn open, had a three or four yard cushion, but just throws it behind him and unfortunately for Alabama, tips right into the hands of Foster. So we've said nothing has come easy for Alabama this year and they have not handled success very well because they had a chance maybe with one score here early in the third quarter to put East Carolina away. Instead, it's a four-point ball game and still three and a half to play in quarter number three and you can bet this will be a fight to the finish now. Steve Logan's team trail 21 to nothing at the half and they are now within a score taking the lead. That has been a problem for the Crimson Tide all season long after turning it over giving up points immediately and that time almost instantly. I believe it's the second time that the opposition has scored as a direct result of a turnover. Think of Sean Alexander's fumble return for a touchdown against BYU. In fact, the first five turnovers of, turnovers of the year went for points against Alabama. Arvin Richard on the return up near the 30-yard line. Brought down by Toma McMillan. So now the Alabama offense has to be a little bit shell-shocked. The first half, the first quarter especially, throw out the interception by Zao on the first possession. Bama dominated it. But since then, it's really been a struggle. Only points here in the second half. The blocked extra point returned for a two-point conversion. Dustin McClintock calls it in. Pulls his way forward to the 34, Eric Reyes, the man who wrestled him out of bounds. 
the Tide this season has had a problem, to say the least, in the third quarter, now being outscored 46-20 to in the third quarter this year. Pickup of five on first down. Second and five. Zal checking off as the play clock winds down. Just in time, he gets it off. Swings it out to Eric Locke, who's pushed back after he makes the catch. From the defensive front, the real strong point of this East Carolina defense is that front four. They may have made a big difference in this football game. Bama needs seven yards to keep the drive going on third down. The Tide six out of 11 on third down today. And flags come in. I don't think he got it off in time. He did not. Delay of game called against Alabama. So it'll now be third and 12. The tide has not looked sharp for the most part here in the second half. Needs to take it just past the 40 to keep the drive going. Zal, plenty of time to throw. Caught by Quincy Jackson and he'll have the first down. Forward progress out to the 41. Tavares Taylor and Forrest Foster there to wrap him up. But it's good for the Alabama first down. Gives, gives Al some credit. The young man's made some mistakes, but not afraid to go ahead and throw the tough pass. Good job by Jackson of getting beyond the first down marker before coming back. Had a little cushion there. Makes a catch, and maybe this will start something good for the Crimson Tide offensively. They need something good to happen. Give the defense a bit of a break and also a little more boost to their confidence. 13 yards they gained on third and 12. Back to the air goes Zal, deep over the middle and incomplete. Looking for Shamari Buchanan, just a little bit high. Kevin Monroe, they're defending for the Pirates. That would have been a very, very difficult catch on the part of Buchanan. Pass coming from the shadows into the sunlight and thrown behind him. Plus a little bit high, it's easy to see why it was incomplete, but a pretty good effort on the part of Shamari. And you sort of lose your breath every time the, the ball is tipped because of the bad bounces Alabama has gotten on offense, especially here in the third quarter. There you see the time remaining in the third quarter. Second and 10 for the Tide from its own 41. Zal pump fake with time, shoots it over the middle. Complete to Michael Vaughn. Hit immediately by Tavares Taylor, but that was a bullet out of the arm of Andrew Zal. Started to say he took every second possible before unloading this football, but as you see the pressure, I think he took an extra second to unload that one. Great pressure applied by East Carolina. Good poise, though, on the part of Andrew Zal. Didn't force the football, made certain that a man was wide open before he deliver the football. It is good for the first down. Val's updated numbers. Closing in on 200 yards. Two touchdown passes in the first half and two interceptions to go with it. One of them a little unlucky. You look at his numbers since coming into the second half of the Florida game, and while they haven't been overly impressive, you look at the result, and that's been a, a movement of the football by Alabama, and that's what matters most. Sean Alexander able to break it outside, 10, 11, 12 yards before they finally bring him down. Kevin Monroe hanging on for dear life. Sean Alexander picks up the first down and is a little slow in picking himself up after the play. Hard running for the Bama tailback. A smile on the face, too, of Sean Alexander. Got some room to run. Good block on the pull by Greff Red Redmill, excuse me, and also Dustin McClintock running interference. Big man kicking it to the outside and thought he might shake free from Monroe and be able to go to the distance, but uh, Monroe just did wrap up. In the days of the tearaways, that's six. 
Timeout taken by Alabama. Arvin Richard had checked into the game for Sean Alexander, but with 22 seconds to play here in the third quarter, the Tide will spend one of its three timeouts. Andrew Zhao over to the sideline to have a word with the Bama coaching staff. Ivy Williams visiting with Sean Toure and Dustin McClintock and Arvin Richard. There you see the timeouts remaining here in the second half. Hope you're enjoying Alabama and East Carolina on Crimson Tide pay-per-view. Chris, a lot of the folks watching are not in the state of Alabama. Different alumni groups from all over the country get together and watch the game. San Antonio, Texas, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Columbia, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, just a, a couple of the groups that have gotten together to watch the Tide and the Pirates this afternoon. And a big hello to everyone watching who is not in state but still cares a lot about the Crimson Tide. Glad you're with us. Glad to have those folks uh, across the country and in state as well and the first of possibly two pay-per-view broadcasts. Right now Southern Miss is scheduled for pay-per-view in a couple of weeks but that game could be picked up by network television. Arvin Richard stays into the game along with Sean Toure but Zal will throw in trouble toward the sideline and incomplete looking for Dustin McClintock. He had Eric Locke open around the 10 yard line David but again heavy pressure applied by East Carolina and when in doubt especially on first down when you finally gotten something to go offensively it's probably a smart play to go ahead and throw it away. Stay up to date on the Crimson Tide with RollTide.com, the official athletic site of the University of Alabama. Game recaps, you can listen to the radio broadcast as well, live as it happens, all at RollTide.com. Zal's pass on second down, swatted away. Mark Yellock, I believe, the man that got the arm up to knock it down. Obviously, you'd like to keep this drive alive and not have to call on Ryan Flugner, but with the breeze that we've seen today, I think you're within Ryan's range. Third down and 10 as Mike Dubose stares on. Play action, Zal. Scrambling, trying to buy himself some time. Now he just throws it away. Norris McCleary, the man harassing him in the backfield, and Andrew finally running out of time, just throws it away. That's a smart play by Andrew Zow because he did able to, to give his receivers time to come open, but completely ran out of time, just unloaded it. We have come to the end of the third quarter at Legion Field in Birmingham, and after three, Alabama still leading the Pirates, but we've got ourselves a ball game going to the fourth. Alabama 23. East Carolina 19, back to Legion Field in just a moment. In 1837, students came from miles around to a university offering a new way of teaching, learning, and looking at the world. Today, they still can. Through an innovative new partnership with the National Science Foundation, that same university is still a leader in reshaping that exciting world of exploration known as engineering. The College of Engineering at the University of Alabama. Just ready to start the fourth quarter here at Legion Field. Alabama leading the Pirates 23-19. David Crane along with Chris Stewart and bad news from the Bama sideline. Calvin Sigler is done for the day with a knee injury. No word on exactly how severe, but we will not see him anymore today, and that is a huge loss for the Alabama defense. Ryan Flugner has come out and will attempt a 53-yard field goal, and it's kind of hard to judge the wind, Chris, because if you look at the big... Uh, American flag, it's blowing at Ryan's back, but the rest of the flags in the stadium are kind of showing a, a wind in his face. It may just be swirling. It's tough, but let's see how he can do from long range. 53-yard try. He certainly got the leg. It's long enough. No good. Five, 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 five. 
He kicked the daylights out of it from 53 yards, but it slid off just wide to the right. It's about the third time this year we've seen Ryan Flugner put plenty of leg into the football from 50 yards and beyond and appeared to have it nailed only to see the ball stay to the right. It's unusual with a right-footed kicker. Normally the ball will hook back between the uprights, but that one just stayed to the right. Pirates with the ball again after the missed field goal. Leonard Henry, the ball carrier, brought down by Marcus Spencer. But a good pickup on first down for ECU. A team that has to be playing with a lot of confidence right now. I think so. They did in one quarter what basically what it took Alabama the first two to accomplish scoring wise. Gerard completes it to Troy Smith. Fernando Bryant there to wrap him up and bring him down, but he takes it into Alabama territory and will have a first down at the tied 45. And number 26 has been held in check basically the entire football game. That is just his third reception of the day, but the other two had only gone for a total of 12 yards. Now you've got the game within one score, and he becomes even more of a danger. The option, Gerard will keep it. Slips outside, breaking tackles. He's inside the 30, down to the 24 before Fernando Bryant can get him. Another missed tackle by the Bama defense, and Gerard takes advantage. He's a good athlete. We knew that coming in. Not the best passer on this team but able to slip one, two tackles, and that's back to what we saw two and three weeks ago, David, just missed tackles by Alabama, allowing the opposition additional yardage after the first hit. Give to the fullback, right up the gut, Tony Dixon. Read it well. Leonard Henry, the ball carrier. Well, and you can just see the confidence of East Carolinas enjoying right now. Guys like tackle Corey Russell just pumped up on every play and they've got Alabama on their heels defensively right now. Pickup of seven on first down brings up second and three. Garrard on the option. Nothing doing this time. The tied defense strings him out. Travis Carroll, Tony Dixon ride him down for a loss of one. Football sitting on the Alabama 18-yard line. We talked about the tie being stingy in the red zone, and they certainly need to come through here. From the shotgun, Gerard on third down. Swings it out to Smith, but a great open field tackle by Travis Smith, and the Pirates will be short of the first down. If there was any question about the speed of Travis Smith, we got a great example of it right there for the linebacker to chase Troy Smith that far and make the play was very, very impressive. Travis Smith, great player for this Alabama defense. Andrew Bays, the punter, is on to attempt what will be a 36-yard field goal. Rivers has struggled with extra points, so they go with Bays here. And he knocks it through. From 36 yards out, Andrew Bays connects. First made field goal this season. He's now one out of three on the year, and he brings the Pirates to within a point. 23-22, Alabama leading it with 11.49 to play in the game. But again, if East Carolina doesn't have the problems in the special teams earlier that they did, they would actually have the lead right now because after their first touchdown, Kenny Smith blocked the extra point, returned it about 20 yards, 25 yards before lateraling to Kelf Bailey at the 40, and then he took it the distance for two points. And then they had, an then they had another one that was missed as well as we take a look back, and Bama did have the three touchdown lead at the break but second half numbers indicate East Carolina's offense really picked things up and they also 
did a great job of taking advantage of Crimson Tide miscues. A tale of two halves to this point. Alabama enjoying the three touchdown lead at intermission is fighting for its life right now. Seven plays, 45 yards for the Pirates. The 36-yard field goal by Andrew Bays. Three minutes, five seconds time of possession for ECU. And now Rivers back out to kick off for the Pirates. Freddie Millens and Arvin Richards, the two deep men for the tie. Rivers drives this one deep and out of the end zone. And the collection of Pirate fans across the way trying to make some noise. David, this may be one of the most important offensive series of the year for Alabama. I don't want to try to overstate something that's just in the sixth game of the year, but this is a game that Alabama cannot afford to lose. It's when they dominated for a half. They've hurt themselves in the second half and allowed East Carolina back into this football game. The offense really needs to establish something, move it down the field really the way they did against Ole Miss on the final series of regulation a week ago. Sean Alexander in the backfield with Andrew Zhao, who looks to throw, completes it to Quincy Jackson across the 20, up to the 24, where he's brought down by Eric Reyes. A very concerned Alabama sideline has seen a three touchdown lead evaporate here in the second half. Pick up a four on the play, brings up second and six. And the give to Sean Alexander. Wrapped up in the backfield and brought down Travis Darden. Drops him for a loss of a couple on the play. And it'll bring up third down and long yardage for the tie. East Carolina's defensive front, we knew coming into the game, was really the strong point of their defensive unit. And another good job by Brian Johnson, defensive tackle, stopping Sean Alexander in his tracks. Mike Dubose visiting with the Bama defense. It's a nice but his way. his offense needs seven yards to keep the drive going. It's a nice way of putting it. Zal incomplete, trying to dump it off to Jason McCadley. But it's incomplete, and Bama will have to punt it away. Three and out for the Tide. We see you came with a blitz forced Zao out of the pocket. He tried to float this one out to McCadley. It was too deep for McCadley and too short for Freddie Millens on that left side. Daniel Pope hangs it up. Harris makes the fair catch at his own 38-yard line. A 39-yard punt by Daniel Pope. No return and pretty good starting position for the Pirate offense. Jamie Wilson on the return unit for East Carolina obviously watched Chad McGeehee on film this week in special teams and knew that he's the, the first guy down the field because he has delivered two crushing blows on McGeehee today. Gerard to throw on first down, completes it to Harris. Across the 45, stays in bounds, and is close to the first down near the 48. Marcus Spencer brought him down after a pickup of better than nine yards on first down. And this is exactly what Steve Logan and the Pirates wanted, keeping it close into the fourth quarter where they have been very stingy the last four games. Henry the ball carrier, and he'll lose yardage on the play. Kendall Moorhead and Steve Stanley drop him behind the line. 
Okay, you're right, David. This is what they were hoping for, but I don't think this is the route they expected to take for it to be a close game in the fourth quarter. If you had told Steve Logan at the half that it would be a 21 to nothing game, I don't believe he would have expected to be back in it. Kendall Moorhead, we talked about him a couple of times. We knew he was a good pass rusher. He has become a better run defender as well this year. Third down, Gerard on play action. Intercepted! Tony Dixon picks it off for the Crimson Tide. Bama had it read well. Gerard looking for Leonard Henry, releasing down the boundary. Tony Dixon steps in front for his first career interception. East Carolina has had their share of big plays defensively, and Alabama comes up with one here. Ball just underthrown. They were trying to connect with Leonard Henry. And a big-time pick from Tony Dixon, and Mike DeBose likes it a lot. So now the Tide takes over at its own 48. Alexander on first down. Weaving through traffic. Pickup of about three on the play before Taylor and Reyes make the stop. And Tavares Taylor staying down. David, that play, I believe, was designed to go off of right guard, and instead, Sean Alexander saw there was nothing there, changes directions, and ends up going over the hole left vacant by the left tackle. He's awfully strong, but it's his cutting capabilities that I think perhaps make Sean Alexander most dangerous. Sean Alexander, 17 carries for 76 yards thus far. And another look at the play. Hard to tell where. Now we can actually see him come into the camera there, but look like Tavares Taylor, did he just bang knees? I think as he planted, the knee gave way. Ooh. Ooh. You can see it buckle just a little bit. That is ugly. The Bama offense huddling around offensive coordinator Neil Calloway on the tied sideline during the stoppage of play. Neil Calloway coming down to the sideline last week. Charlie Stubbs, the quarterback's coach, moving up to the press box. And so far through two games, you'd have to say that has worked very well. Taylor. Gets a nice hand from the crowd, but in obvious pain as he has helped off to the East Carolina bench. This is a senior, Tavares Taylor, 6'3", 195, out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, in his final year, and hopefully that injury will not keep him out beyond this week. John Alexander trotting back onto the field. There you see his numbers with 8.35 to go in the ball game, and the clock is running. Second down and seven from the ECU 49. The reverse to Eric Locke. Trying to get outside. Locke down the sideline to the Pirate 45. And some pushing and shoving going on on the Bama sideline. Oh. Bama used the, this effectively last week, Chris, to set up some other things. He did indeed, and the play action worked well. And the reason you heard the reaction is because Chris Samuels continued blocking Mark Yellock until he was about four rows deep into the bleachers. They, uh, they kept the activity going. They get it to Alexander, who cuts it up, and he will not have the first down. Brian Johnson filled the hole that time. And that's really the first time today when Bama has gone with that formation with McClintock and Madden ahead of Alexander. First time that the Pirates have stopped them. It's, it's going to be fourth down, David, and I believe Mike DeBose has elected to go for it. Well, let's see if they go with the 
the long count and try to draw ECU off sides or if they'll actually go ahead and run it. They've got their power look in there with Madden and McClintock. Bama needs about two yards to keep it going. Long snap count by Andrew Zhao. And now he calls the timeout. I don't know if they were ever going to snap that football, David. Second timeout taken by the Crimson Tide, and now it will be up to Daniel Pope to hopefully pin the Pirates deep. He's put the game in the hands of his defense. As you look at Steve Logan, thought the, the snap should have been live. And wondered whether the actual timeout was called. Hogan did snap it, but the timeout had already been called, and it's a good thing. As Mark Yellock was ready to pick that one up. Marcellus Harris is the deep man standing at his own five, but Daniel Pope will likely kick this one to the sideline and try and pin him deep with the coffin corner punt. Movement up front by the tide and they'll blow the play dead. Alabama just trying to draw them off sides again, David, and, and five yards right here is not that big of a deal. It just gives Daniel Pope a little bit more room to work with. So the five-yard step off. And they'll line it up and do it again. Daniel Pope, the senior from Alpharetta, Georgia, former walk-on who was given a scholarship just before the season started by head coach Mike Dubose, another of the Bama co-captains this season. Pope hangs this one up high. Harris will let it bounce. And it goes into the end zone. Bama fans not happy, thinking the tide had kept it out and downed it on the two, but one of the officials right there signaled immediately that it had crossed the plane of the goal line. Well, Gary Barnes was there, a reserve free safety, and also Chad McGee. But McGee's right foot, I believe, was on the goal line, David, and that's why football comes back out to the 20. So East Carolina takes over. 6.41 to play in the game. Bama leading by one all day for Gerard to throw and he sends it into the pirate bench looking for Troy Smith he was hounded by Fernando Bryant and a good play by Gerard as well to go ahead and just throw this one out of bounds because there's good coverage there by the Alabama secondary and also had Kendall Moorhead getting pretty close as well Second down and 10. Gerard with time. Over the middle, complete to Chapel. Wrapped up by Travis Carroll, who makes the tackle. Canary Knights frustrated with himself because he had the initial hit at about the 21, but Carroll, a good job of picking up his teammate there, got there in a hurry and only allowed an additional yard, as we'll see it again. They come across the middle on the pattern. And Knight has him right there, but a good job by Chapel to break free, but Carroll also a good job defensively along with Tony Dixon. East Carolina struggled all day on third down. It's third and seven. Low snap. Gerard in trouble. And the tide puts him down. Reggie Miles was coming on the blitz, David, and he was picked up. East Carolina doing a good job blocking. You'll see the bottom or the right of your screen that Miles was coming in, but the snap was low. Gerard couldn't hang on to it, and the cavalry had arrived. So the Bama defense holes. Bays will punt it away, and he hits a beauty. Arvin Richard all the way back at his 26.
up to the 29-yard line. A 61-yard punt by Andrew Bays, which is impressive, but not a career best. He hit a 68-yarder last season, but very timely nonetheless for the Pirates. 5.09 to play. Bama's got the ball back and a one-point lead. Starting from its own 28, McClintock breaks in motion. Screen to Quincy Jackson down the sideline. Jackson into ECU territory, ridden out by Kelvin Suggs at the 45. David, what a great call. Alabama, you would think, with about five minutes to go in this game, is going to go back to the ground game, try to run some clock. They even light up in the straight eye set, but they break that with McClintock, then throw it to the left. And look at the blocks from Samuels and Redmill, just enough to allow Quincy Jackson to pick up the first down and a lot more. 27-yard pickup on the play. Jackson five catches for 66 yards. Alexander, the carrier now. Ducks his head, takes it down to the 42, a gain of three. And we've heard Mike DeVos say it before the season ever started. We're not going to get away from being a wide open team. We're going to spread the field. We're going to throw it from anywhere. And we saw a good example of that on first down. You hope that loosens things up for Sean Alexander. He's had maybe not the best day ever, but enough success to make the passing game effective as well. Swing it out to Alexander. McClintock and Calvin Hall trying to spring him. Eric Reyes brought him down at the 39, so the Tide will be facing third and four. Whether it's as a receiver or as a running back, you would think that number 37 will have his hands on the football a good bit here in the final four minutes of this contest. That's what Alabama went with against Ole Miss. Worked pretty well. Bama 7 out of 14 on third down today. Tide coming in only at 35% on the season on third down thus far. Play action. Zow to throw. Incomplete. Looking for Arvin Richard over the middle. A little high of the target. And decision time for Mike Dubos. I think he's going for it. Daniel Pope still on the sidelines. We take a look at it again. He wanted to go with Richard, but to the right of your screen, you may be able to see he's, he's frustrated himself. He knows Richard was open, but he had Dustin McClintock even more open right behind Arvin Richard on the play, both open across the middle. Bama will go for it on fourth down. Some confusion in the huddle. The Tide's going to have to hurry. Three seconds on the play clock, and the Tide calls timeout. Final timeout of the game for Bama. The Tide trying to shuffle on some players at the last moment. Zal was not going to beat the 25-second clock, so he wisely takes the timeout. And again, fortunate that the timeout was called before Paul Hogan snapped the football because there was nobody there. It's kind of funny to watch Hogan go back and get himself this time. I think I'll just take that. Thank you. Three minutes, 30 seconds. 23-22, Alabama hanging on right now against East Carolina. Mike Dubos visiting with referee Al Ford, and you know the Tide and Coach Dubos would love to run out the remaining 3.30 on the clock. And they can certainly help themselves by converting this fourth and four. One out of two today on fourth down. Two for four on the year. McClintock and Alexander split to either side of Andrew Zhao, who works from the shotgun on fourth down. Zhao, incomplete. Intended for Calvin Hall, but good coverage by the Pirates. 
And they'll take over on down. Mike Dubose putting this game squarely in the hands of his defense now. Risky move going for it on fourth and four. Felt like his offense would be able to execute. Now let's see if the defense can shut the door one more time on East Carolina. Just out of the reach of Calvin Hall, and now East Carolina gets it at their own 39. Garrard in trouble. Down he goes. He throws it away as a flag comes in. And now I think we're going to have a second flag. Al Ford, the referee, threw a flag, which I believe will be a hold or a clip against East Carolina. And then I believe he threw his hat, indicating intentional grounding against Gerard, who was in trouble from the start. Yes, Smith came on the blitz. Kendall Moorhead was coming as well. And Gerard felt as though he just had to heave the football somewhere. So both penalties were against the Pirates. Bama opts for the intentional grounding, which carries the loss of down. Move it back all the way to the 21. Second and 25 for the Pirates. Gerard in trouble, slips away. Completes it to the tight end, Buck Collins, but he's taken down immediately by Kelf Bailey. The little man got a head of steam going and brought down the big tight end. We knew coming into the game that East Carolina does not like to go to the, off the tight end very often, but this was purely out of necessity. David Garrard just looking for a friendly face to throw the football to and finds Collins, but took about a five-yard head start, but Kelf got up enough steam to be able to bring down the big tight end. Third down for the Pirates. They need the 49. It's third and 28. Gerard going long down the boundary for Chapel, and it's incomplete. A lot of contact between Chapel and Kelf Bailey, but no flags. And that'll bring up fourth down. There was a lot of contact, but it was all being applied by Chapel. He was the one trying to run up the back of Kelf Bailey on the play. And a good job by Kelf to keep his feet and try and stay in front of the would-be receiver. So on fourth and 28, the Pirates send out the punt team. Bama did not have a timeout. They had too many men on the field and the back judge or the field judge steps in to blow the play dead and let's see how they sort this out. I feel confident with 16 men on the field they had to play defense nicely but uh, I don't think they expected I don't think they expected East Carolina to go ahead and punt with just 221 on the clock and uh, Alabama very slow to react with the special teams. Fourth and 28, Alabama tried to call a timeout, but the tide is out of them. So the official stepped in. Steve Logan is absolutely furious, and you can't blame him. Bama had probably 13, 14 men on the field, and will get a second chance at it. Basically got a free timeout. Bays gets it away. Richard makes the fair catch at the 32. A 57-yard punt for Andrew Bays, and Steve Logan is still hot. I, I really can't say that I blame him. That was a missed opportunity for East Carolina there. It wasn't their fault. I'm not real certain of the, the ruling there, David, but it certainly worked out to Alabama's benefit. There you see the time remaining. East Carolina with all three timeouts. Bama going with the full house backfield. Sean Alexander, two hands on the ball. And the Pirates call a timeout. Roderick Coleman on the tackle. And ECU will stop the clock two more times and hopefully 
get it back one more time. Tavares Taylor on the East Carolina sideline. Well, our streak is intact. We have kept viewers to the last play <laughs> two previous weeks on delayed broadcast, and we're keeping them here as well, I would hope, on pay-per-view as well. Alabama has certainly helped the television ratings and made it very interesting, but not what Mike DeBose was hoping for. He had, he had hoped at this point, after going to the halftime break with a 21 to nothing lead, that by now they would be able to re relax a little bit, but that has certainly not been the case in the second half today. Like to say hello to a few more of our alumni groups having pay-per-view parties around the country in Houston, Nashville, the National Capital Chapter in Washington, D.C., Dallas, Texas, Indiana, Orlando, Florida, Pensacola, Florida, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Glad you're with us here on Crimson Tide Pay-Per-View. Second down and 10. Alexander straight ahead. Takes it to the 35. And the Pirates quickly call their second timeout. Eight seconds running off the clock for that play. And ECU will have one timeout remaining. If he hits 100, you feel pretty good. <laughs> Alabama, what, undefeated when he's got 100 yards or more? throughout his career. It doesn't happen very often that he gets 100 and the tide loses. And were he to break one long one here to push him over the century mark, you like the tide's chances. Well, they've gotten the, the ball in Sean's hands, I don't want to say enough, that Mike DeBose says he doesn't want any game to pass without Sean touching it at least 25 times. I believe he has hit that number with receptions and rushes today. But he says he would like for it to be between 25 and 30, preferably closer to 30. 158, all that remains here in the fourth quarter. Alabama leading at 23-22 over a pretty good East Carolina team. Didn't really know what to expect. They lost in their season opener to Virginia Tech 38-3, but it rattled off four straight wins against Chattanooga, Ohio, Army, and UAB. Zal sets up to throw, complete to Dustin McClintock. <laughs> Gutsy call on third down for the Tide, and it may have paid off. I just looked over in the athletic director's box to our right, and Polly DuBose has finally started breathing again. When that ball went in the air, I think uh, she, along with most Alabama fans, were just hoping beyond hope that that would either be caught or fall incomplete, but a very dangerous pass for the freshman to float out there, but credit Dustin McClintock. He just went and got this ball and very easily could have been an interception, but Big Red made certain it stayed in possession of the Crimson Tide and got the first down to boot. 20th first down of the game for Alabama and maybe none bigger. 150 to play and they will wind the clock once the chains are set. You talked about first downs, David, coming into today's contest, how important they were for Alabama to give the defense a rest. Right now it was so important just to keep the football away from East Carolina. Their offense from ECU has played well in the second half, but hopefully it will not be enough here today. Zal takes a knee, and East Carolina spends its final timeout of the game with 1.25 remaining. Bama, a good job of moving the chains in the first half, not nearly as successful here in the final two quarters. But if Bama can take care of the football for about 90 seconds, the Tide should improve to 4-2 and two on the year and get ready to face Tennessee and Knoxville next Saturday. East Carolina will stay on the road and travel to Hattiesburg to take on Southern Miss. Well, it will not be easy to get out of here in a hurry tonight because the fans have stayed almost to the end. They may be 
out of their seats now, but they're not completely out of the portals as of yet. Just now starting to filter that way. They have, again, with a young football team, you live and die with close ball games, and it's like Bama's going to walk away with a victory for the second straight week. Zal finally takes a knee, and the Pirates are helpless to stop the clock. You know, again, it has not been a perfect game at all from Andrew Zal, but he has made enough plays, enough good plays to, to give Alabama a chance today. The defense did enough of a... Uh, a good job in the first half and late in this ball game to make certain that uh, East Carolina did not steal a W here today at Legion Field. Officially third and 11. And movement across the front. Five yard step off against the tide. Well, the big thing is not the yardage that stops the clock, and that's what East Carolina could not do any longer with all the timeouts gone, but need to keep it running. So if the Tide can drag this play out, may not have to snap it again, but it'll be close. Sal takes the snap. Goes to a knee. And it all depends on when he blows the whistle. Just in the nick of time, and Alabama will not have to snap it again. Al Ford blew it ready for play when the game clock said 24 seconds, Steve Logan. Not a very happy no. man toward the end of this game. Heads over to meet Mike Dubose. And the Tide, after jumping out to the 21 to nothing lead in the first half, hangs on for dear life to beat East Carolina. Well, they got a battle today. They found out you can't play 30 minutes against a football team and be able to walk away without sweating it a little bit. But Alabama with enough good plays in the first half and sucking it up in the fourth quarter, doing enough to pull off the victory today. A win is a win, and you go to Tennessee and hope to have success in Rocky Top country. Alabama improves to 4-2 and two on the year. East Carolina drops to 4-2. and two. And as Chris said, Bama heads north to Knoxville next Saturday for the, what will be fourth Saturday in October, meeting with the Big Orange undefeated and number three in the nation. We didn't know at the time how big a play it was, David, but the extra point block after East Carolina's first touchdown by Kenny Smith and then the lateral to Kelf Bailey turned out to be the difference in this football game today. And then the missed extra point on the next touchdown by the Pirates, so special teams really killed East Carolina today, or they very easily could have walked out of Legion Field an upset winner. We had a, a note that we made coming into this broadcast that place kicking was an adventure for East Carolina. Did not know that it would be the determining factor in this football game, but that was the case today. 23-22, our final score, and here comes the blocked extra point and what proved to be the winning margin for Bama. Kenny Smith with the block, running out of gas, finds Kelf Bailey, and little did we know that would be the difference, but was the final. Andrew Bays, the punter, place kicker had a shot at him, couldn't catch him. Bama wins it, 23-22. For Chris Stewart, I'm David Crane. So long from Birmingham.